right, everyone. Uh, today we are recording in period one. It's solving systems of equations uh, using graphing substitution and elimination. Just to kind of, uh, as a reminder, if you have a question at all and you want to be on, please feel free to ask. You guys are more than welcome to. But if not, then at the very end of the video, I'll give you time uh, to ask your question. Yeah. All right. I already got one question. You're welcome. All right, so what is a system of equation? It's a group of equations with the same variable. Uh, the solution is always the point of intersection whenever it comes to two graphs. So whenever you're looking for a solution, it is always the point of intersection. I can't stress that enough. And it's always a coordinate point with x, y. With classifying systems, there are three possibilities of solutions when solving by graphing. Uh, first one is intersecting lines. That's what we call consistent independence. Uh, the second one is this, they are the same line. That means that we accidentally, we uh, technically, not accidentally, but we drew the same line uh, over top of each other. It's twice. That means there's infinitely many solutions. It's called consistent dependent. And then there are parallel lines. Uh, that's when they will never intersect. So there's no solution. It is called inconsistent. How we classify those, okay? Consistent <clears throat> means that we have at least one um, solution. Inconsistent means we have no solution. So that's why that's parallel lines. The difference between independent and dependent then, so if consistent means at least one solution, independent means that you have exactly one solution. Uh, dependent means that you would have more than one or infinite amount. So that's why the difference between the consistent independent and the consistent dependent. Okay. Example one. Try it on your own. See if you can do it. Go ahead and uh, graph, <clears throat> graph and classify. While you do it at your seat, I'm, I'm just going to do it up here silently. And uh, those of you that are watching the video, this is the perfect time to pause and try it on your own. If you're graphing this, you notice I use two different colors. I usually try and do that whenever I do graph. Um, it helps it so I can visually see which line I'm actually looking at. Uh, so I've got both of them where I solve them for Y. You, you can also use X and Y intercepts in order to graph. I'm totally okay with that. Whatever you would like to do, the big thing is to make sure that you graph and you find the point of intersection. Hey. Um, so in this case, you get the intersection at negative 1, negative 3, and we would classify that as consistent independent. Questions at all on example number 1, how to graph? Okay, so moving on with our systems of equations, the next type 
is use, uh, solve using substitution and then classify. Substitution is a nice little one because if you have an X or Y by itself, you can then simplify it out and then substitute or plug it back into the other equation. You can solve either for your X or your Y, it does not matter. So there are multiple ways to do a pro uh, to solve a problem. Um, if I'm looking at this equation or both of these equations, I'm trying to see if there are any X or Y values that have a coefficient of one because that would make it the easiest to solve. And unfortunately in this, I do not. So I'm going to use, uh, and this is just me. You, if you're at home trying it, or if you're in class, if you're starting it already and you want to solve something different, you can. Uh, but I'm just going to try and solve the first one for Y. I chose that because two was my smallest. So I add the three X over and then divide it by two on both of those. And then from here, I'm going to plug that into my second equation. You always want to plug it into the other equation. You don't want to plug it back into itself. Then you'll get a, you'll get a, a funky answer. But I'm going to plug it back into that equation. So now I have 8x minus 4 times 3 halves x plus 6 equals 8. And then I'll solve it out. And I'll stop talking. I'll let you guys kind of solve, solve and see what you get. So now once you get your variable, so in this case, I eliminated my Y, I'm solving for my X, I get X is equal to 16. You can then plug that 16 back into any one of the, the two original, or even if the new one, the new one says Y is equal to three halves X plus six. I mean, you might want to plug that into the equation as well. And as always, this is still, if I were to graph both of these, they would intersect then at the point 1630. questions at all about substitution. Again, we're trying to substitute in so we can eliminate a variable, then we solve. And then once we get that solution, uh, like we did here, x is equal to 16, we plug it back into one of the two equations, or three equations, I guess, or whatever form, um, and then solve for our, another, our next variable. You do not always have to start with solving for a y like I did at the very beginning here. Okay. Uh, I'll kind of highlight that here. You don't have to do that necessarily. You could say X is equal to and solve for X. It should give you a very uh, similar type of solution. And then if you don't mind, uh, example number three is the very last type that you have. 
all of these can form back into graphing, just as a heads up. And then, oh, uh, before we do example number three, on two, if you're like, hmm, those are pretty big numbers. Did I do this correctly? You can always plug those numbers back into both of those equations to see if you have a solution and check. So real quick, I'm, I just want to show you the check on example two. You can do this for uh, substitution and elimination. But if I go negative three times 16 plus two times uh, 30 equals 12, uh, you end up with, uh, what is it, 60 minus... I think it is, or sorry, uh, negative 48 plus 60, which does give you 12, so that works. And then 8 times 16 minus 4 times uh, 30 equals 8. So this is uh, negative 120, uh, and this is, I believe, 128. So that does check out. So they both work in that equation, therefore, uh, that is our solution. You can do the same uh, whenever you solve using elimination. So if you don't remember what elimination is, eliminate means, uh, elimination method literally means we're going to eliminate a variable. Uh, usually you can add or subtract straight down. You want to make sure that your X's are over top of each other, your Y's are over top of each other, and then uh, just your independent numbers are over top of each other. I personally never... Um, subtract technically straight down i always try and add so for instance if i'm trying to eliminate uh, if i'm trying to eliminate the y i want to try and find a, a number that three and four both have in common a common multiple so in this case that's 12. so i'm going to multiply uh the top by four and the bottom by three you can also multiply by a negative number. If both of those, uh, 3y and 4y were both positive, you could multiply by a negative number in order to uh, solve. But since they are not, I do not have to worry about that. And I'll show you why in a second. So I'm going to multiply the 4 through. And now, as you can see, the 12y and negative 12y disappear. So I'm left with 26x is equal to negative uh, 52. Divide by 26, and x is equal to negative 2. Okay, so it's eliminating that variable of y. You could have eliminated x. Uh, it just would have given you your y value. And then once I have that, I'm going to plug it back into one of the two equations. I'm going to plug it back into the top equation. And then I get my coordinate point, point of intersection solution and then I classify it remember the three types of classifications since you have a solution this is consistent independent um, if there were no solution okay, uh, which could happen like you get an answer like four is equal to four three is equal to three uh, that is consistent dependent, that's infinite solutions. But if you get like four is equal to six or two is equal to nine, whenever you're solving, um, that's what we would call inconsistent. Questions at all on those first three examples? Solving. Okay. I would like you to try example number four and maybe try example number five on your own. I'm going to give you a little bit of time. You can work with somebody if you want to. Just as a reminder, uh, this is going to just continue to record. Uh, so I'll probably try and do them up here. See if you can get the same, same answer. Okay, solve using any method and then classify.
If you, uh, if you finish example four and you look up at the board and you're like, you know what, I'm good with that answer, even if you didn't do it the same exact way, okay, maybe you use substitution, bless you, maybe you used a different way in order to solve, but you ended up with the same exact answer. You are good. You want to go ahead and try example five. You can And then last but not least, example number five. Example number five is a new type of problem that might have you scratching your head a little bit uh, just because it uses uh, three variables. Okay, so I'm going to have you try. You guys can go ahead and try that for a little bit and see what you get. Give you about five minutes. I'd like you to try and work with someone if possible. Try and figure out the solutions. This is a new problem for myself, uh, so I'm also going to work through it. You guys have a different problem than that? Hold on a second. Do you guys have the problem 2x minus 3y minus z is equal to 12? Yeah. Okay. Let's do that one first. That one might help a little bit with how we do this next problem then. Um, changing gears. Okay. We're going to separate this. I'd like you to do this example.
Try the one in green first. Solve it for x, y, z. So notice how I took the z and plugged it back into the equation, the equation above the solve for y. So there's no classification on this, but to write your, um, write your answer, it would just be X, Y, Z, because we're working in three, three dimensions. When you're finished with that one, okay, you can look up at the board and see uh, how I did it. If you have any questions, let me know. And then I'd like you to try the other one with a partner. Just a little more difficult. It, um, the classifications are for the two, two dimensional ones. Yeah. I'm just going to have you guys do the classification for those and not worry about any type of classification for that. Take about five minutes. It's 751 right now in class. It's 756. Let's go over this problem. I will tell you guys, I think substitution is easier on these types of problems than elimination, but you can use elimination as well. So if you're sitting at your seat and you're like, I don't know where to start, think of this. With all of those variables, which one has a coefficient of 1? X in the top. So you could actually solve this out and say X is equal to move 3Y to the other side by adding it. Subtract 6Z plus 21. And now you know what X is going to be in this equation and in this equation. So that would eliminate one of your two variables that you had. So if I was doing this, I would, I'm going to have both of these equations here. I've got three times three Y minus six Z plus 21 plus two Y minus five Z equals negative 30. And then I've got two times three Y minus six Z plus 21 minus 5y plus 2z equals negative 6. I would simplify those and then you have two, two of them that have just two variables and then from there you could use any type of system that you want. So 9y minus 18z plus 63 plus 2y minus 5z equals negative 30. 
So 11 Y minus 23 Z equals negative 93. I combine my Y's, I combine my Z's, and I just subtract the 63. And then on this equation, 6Y minus 12Z plus 42 minus 5Y plus 2Z equals negative 6. And then I end up with 1Y minus 10Z equals negative 48. And then I would go so far as to, because this is a, this Y is by itself, I would say here that Y is equal to 10 Z mi minus 48. Because then what we can do is we can take this here and plug it in for where Y is over in this equation to get Z alone. So, so watch what I'm about to do. Okay. I'm going to say that I have 11 times 10 Z minus 48 minus 23 Z equals negative 93. So 110 Z minus, anybody know what 48 times 11 is? 48 times 11, okay. I'm just gonna do that math out here. Eight, four, eight, four. Five twenty-eight minus twenty-three z equals negative ninety-three. So one ten minus twenty-three. I'm going to take the shortcut. I'm going to use a calculator real quick for time's sake. Eighty-seven z, and I'm going to move the five twenty-eight over. So I get 435. So if I divide those by 87, I end up with Z equaling 5. So now that I have that, okay, I'll show you an orange. I'm going to take this answer. I'm going to plug it back into this equation where I had Y was equal to. So Y is equal to 10 times 5 minus 48, so y is equal to 50 minus 48, y is equal to 2, let's use a different color here, let's go with blue, okay, and then I'm going to take both of these answers and I'm going to plug it into the very top equation where I solve for x, so if you follow along with the where the blue is here, it will be x is equal to 3 times 2 minus 6 times 5 plus 21. So x is equal to 6 minus 30 plus 21. x is equal to negative 24 plus 21. x is equal to negative 3. So my solution... <coughs> Negative 3, 2, 5. And that is it for the notes today.